Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to validate our Hack SMS model. In our previous videos, uh, we saw how to set up a model and how to calibrate a model. So in this uh, tutorial series, uh, I already have the calibrated model from my previous video. You, if you didn't watch the video, you can go and you can watch that first and then you can complete this tutorial as well. So from our previous video, we have this uh, graph. We can see the blue line is our simulated uh, stream flow, the hydrograph and the black line for observation. And we can see here the Nash Sutcliffe coefficient NSE is uh, 0 0.939, which is, uh, which is pretty good, right? So th this is our calibration results. Now we will select another time period to validate our model because we fixed our model parameters and then we will change only our forcing. So the main forcing for this model is rainfall and I have already downloaded this rainfall for another time period and the stream flow at the outlet as well. So let's see how can we validate our model. Since we already fixed our model parameter in our calibration, right? So I have just copied this calibration, basin calibration as basin calibration, uh, calibration underscore val. So this is for validation. And yeah, you can just right click and you can make a copy and you can just rename it. That's it. So this is how I just made this copy of our basin calibration. And then what I have to do, I have to add my met model here. I have only met model for calibration. I'm going to add another met model for validation. And then I need to generate a controller specification and I have to add like time series specification and time series discharge. So let's see from component, I can even create metrological model manager and then I can click new and here I can rename it as mat and val. Okay. And then I can give the name as like a uh, validation. Okay. Uh, validation. And that's it. Okay, I can just click. Okay, that's okay. And then what do you have to do if I click there? See, I have this right. So here from basin, and I can even change that one if, if I have any missing value. So don't abort. And instead of doing that, set to default. And then see from basin, I have this right. Uh, basin calibration well means that that is my current basin. So now it is no. I'm changing it to yes. So that means my MET model is connected to my basin model. And then if you click on the specified hydrograph, see you can see that it is not connected. So we have to generate a rainfall time series, then we'll get access and then we'll add that because the one we have it is for calibration period. So here from component, click on, okay, instead of doing the same thing, I can just copy, okay? I can make a copy of that. I can right click on that and then create a copy then I can change the time so rainfall so I can as well so this is for validation rainfall okay validation rainfall uh, series that's it so I have the same time but let's check and for even uh, discharge I can even copy that one as well because I have the discharge data as well so observation for a validation val okay so observe discharge for validation okay so i'm creating the copy i have that data set let's populate this uh, time series with our actual data we have so for rainfall the time will be i have the excel file here we can see the time we have from uh, 30th of May, the rainfall, this is rainfall inches and this is, okay, let me incremental inches, okay, and the flow rate is basically CFS, CFS, because we are using CFS, if you already saw that previous uh, video, then you have idea about that, so the time from May 30, 00, 00 hour to uh, all the way to June 9, right, and 2013, and the hour is five okay so let me specify the time there that time here uh, here we have to change it like 30 may right 30 
30th of May 2013 it is same and we calibrated the model for the same year but for different time period for April you can see the time and to 9 right June 9 2013 but here it will be 5 hour then I will have the time series now what I have to do I have to copy the time series and then I can even paste it there and I can even plot it so this is my rainfall data set I just imported and now do the same thing for discharge so for discharge okay let me check that even again so it is incremental inches early data everything looks okay that's why I copied so you don't need to fix it again so it is same one hour and cubic feet per second and then I can change the time it is the same time 30th of May 2000 13 00 hour to june 9 okay june 9th june 2013 but instead of one hour it is going to be fifth hour then we have empty table and here we can even copy the flow rate Control c and then i can paste it there so that's it you can see the graph okay so this is our graph now this is it so we have our rainfall we have our flow rate and what we have to do we have to connect this observation uh, well to the outlet right so let's go to that basin calibration not calibration this is basically okay let, let me rename that I just copied it and I added val but it should be different okay so validation okay basin validation instead of calibration valve validation okay so that's it and now maybe i have to change that met model because it is going to be different this met model uh yeah so we have validation okay i made some error okay okay now it's perfect then go to this one and check that if it okay it's yes no problem then what you have to do here you can find that time series right rainfall val select that this because this rainfall val we have only one station observed data that's why we are just assuming okay we have rainfall everywhere from this data set this is a little bit problematic but we don't have any option to do that and we did the same thing for our calibration so we are going with this one whatever data we have and we have this observation let's connect the outlet with the observation we have uh, from validation so here option select that observation well so our outlet is connected to our observation and then we have our rainfall right for this 30th of may 2013 to 9th of june 2013 and up to our five so we are done with our met model we are done with our time series and then what we have to do we have to create control right control specification and then we have to create the run simulation so for the control specification this is for calibration period then we can even copy that and change the date and time so create a copy and this control is for control underscore val okay so we can describe that okay control specification specification for validation period right yeah and then this control is has the same time but we have to change it like 30th of may 30th of May 2013 00 hour to June 9 so 2013 and up to this fifth hour and this has to be like one hour data because we have hourly data set we can even run for lower time period as well but uh, since our every data observation data set is in uh, hourly time and stuff so we can even go with the same uh, time and stuff as well right so we are done with our control specification 
and what do we have to do compute so in our compute we have to create the simulation run so go to compute and a simulation run manager and then create a new run called validation run okay validation validation run and here we have to select that basin model for which we are going to validate our model so basin validation and then the met model we have to select that met model for validation period then we have to select the control specification for validation period so we are done with our uh, simulation right here we have that so we can see that okay output will be all model is basin validation or metallurgical model is met validation controller specification is this and if you want to even write the special result you can see that that is also possible and let's see yeah if you want to even show like special result like a specially distributed rainfall or anything else so we usually uh, do this for a gridded model in my pre uh, future video i'll show you how to set up a gridded model instead of lumped model and then i'll even turn this on and then i'll show you how to show the results as well it will show the especially uh, varying rainfall run of everything okay so now we are done with everything i'm just saving the model and now i'll run it validation run and then we'll see our result as well i don't know what is going to happen it runs pretty quickly go to results and this is like different run we have so validation run click there it's a global summary you can see that this is our global summary and then we have this summary there is there is nothing because we don't have any observation for each of this we have only one observation there at the outlet we can click there we can see the graph oh it's really look, looking good okay let me just uh, remove the other one and let's see actually which one we are comparing with our observation i'm deleting extra yeah so that could be our comparison okay so this is our validation it looks really good because our calibration was good right it is uh, clearly capturing the peak and everything looks okay okay so that is the validation it is it is expect, expected that the validation result should be reduced compared to calibration but i don't know what happened let's see uh, table summary right oh yeah so it's like 0 0.893 the nash Sutcliffe coefficient is this and the person bias is 13.21 and the volume is 2.44 but our volume was 2.76 that's okay and in terms of like uh, peak discharge we have 66 this is the computed 6600 and here we have 65 almost 6 65 uh, 6 right it is 6577 and that is like 6632 almost the same and here in terms of the timing uh, june 2 2013 18 hour and here it is like uh, 13 hour so we have like five hour difference that's okay it doesn't matter but still it is capturing pretty accurately and the co uh, correlation is too good and uh, if i compare with validation let's see if i have the results so maybe i'm reducing that that is my uh, validation right yeah so that will be okay 939 let's compare with calibration and the validation so that is calibration and that one is uh, validation so it is 0 0.939 and it is 0 0.893 so almost same if you compare the percent bias it is around 5% minus 4 it is 13 and here the RMSC is 0 0.2 here 0 0.3 that's okay so in terms of correlation this calibration and validation looks pretty amazing so if you have a, a model like this your calibration is too good like this more than 90 and if, if your validation also same like more than 90 or close to 90 right 0 0.9 that means your model is uh, very very good and you can even apply this model for any other event with high confidence level so this is how you can even validate your model and if you want to even check other criteria other properties 
and you can do that and if i compare the graphs again let me even remove and clean it removing the local flows and we have this graph from calibration we have uh, this graph from validation right and we have okay let me open that table this table is from validation and we have another one this table is from calibration so that's it so this is the calibration curve and the statistics we see and this is the validation and the statistics we can see so it's pretty amazing because this model is kind of challenging see the calibration graph is kind of flat the hydrograph observation hydrograph is uh, not that uh, typical hydrograph rather than having a sharp uh, peak it has a flat peak, uh, peak right that is even challenging to capture and still we have like good correlation and for validation period even it's a uh, typical hydrograph we usually uh, see in any flood event so so what are the uh, process to your yeah, processes to validate any model so if your model is calibrated then just copy the basin model because we have to keep right all the calibrated parameter so that's why you don't need to change anything without changing any model parameter just copy the basin model then use different uh, data set for different time period uh, the time series data like all these forcings rainfall and if you want to even check you have to have like observation data set right for the same time period means for the validation time period and then you can run the model and then check it if it like uh, uh, within your expected uh, values like more than 0 0.6 up to one so the more the better then you, you have your model ready so now you have the tool ready to even run for any other event so now our calibration looks good validation looks good so we have the tool ready on our hand and if i see that okay i have one event and i can even run it okay so that's it even if you want to predict uh, some future scenario when we can do that that is also possible maybe in my future video i'll do that so from here we can even do the same thing forecast alternative manager if you even click on that that is also possible then what do you have to do you have to create the forecast one and for like validation okay since i have validated the model i can do that and for calibration even i can do that as well okay for example for validation i can check it and then oh, for met model you can select anything that is also possible so i'll show you that in my future video how to even predict uh, future condition using this model because our tool is now ready so that's it we have everything ready like this and you can even practice for your study area and let me know if you have any query or question i'll try to answer that so until then stay safe and thank you very much for supporting my youtube channel and thank you for watching okay bye